Welcome to Mathematics of Investments. So, sa course natin na to, may apat tayong course topics. Hinati natin sa apat yung subject natin. So, for part 1, we are going to tackle about interest. Part 2, NWT. Part 3, depreciation. And part 4, about the bonds. So, the first one is about the interest. So, what is interest? Interest, uh, it says here that interest is the money paid for the use of the borrowed money. So, kung halimbawa ang hihiram ako ng pera, of course, may kaakibat na interest yon. Hindi lang sa paghiram, kundi sa pag-deposit ng pera. Borrowed money and deposited money, kailangan may interest yon. So, there are two kinds of interest, the simple and compound interest. So, ano yung kaibahan ng dalawa? The simple interest is the interest paid on the principal money lent only is called the simple interest. In comparison naman doon sa compound interest, when simple interest that is due is not paid, the amount is added to the interest bearing principal. The interest calculated on this new principal is called the compound interest. So simple interest, very simple lang siya. May formula tayo mamaya, the interest paid is for the money lent lang talaga. When, sa compound interest naman, kung hindi mo mababayaran yung borrowed money mo using the simple interest, papatong yon, papatong ng papatong yon in due time, so that is called compound interest. So, mas complex yung concept ng compound interest kesa sa simple interest, okay? So, this is uh, going to be our topics under the simple interest. So, for two weeks, we are going to discuss about these topics, these six topics. So, the first topic is the simple interest formula. The formula for the simple interest is I equal to P times R times T, where the I is the simple interest, the P is the principal amount kung magkano yung hiniram ko or deposit ko. The R is the rate of interest, kung ilang percentage yung interest. Yung T is the length of time, kung hanggang kailan ko siya babayaran. Okay. When interest is added to the principal at the end of the stipulated time, the total sum is called the future amount or F. So the future amount is equal to the P or the principal amount plus the interest. So combining the value of the interest plus the principal amount, yun yung all-in-all all babayaran ko within the certain period of time. So, combining the two formula, we have F equals P times PRT since I is equal to PRT. Then, factoring, ilalabas natin yung P, i-enclose natin sa parenthesis yung matitira. F is equal to P times 1 plus RT. And, finding for the value of P, that is equal to F divided by 1 plus R T. So, for example, Venus deposited 5,000 in a bank at 6.5% simple interest for 2 years. How much will she earn after 2 years? Assuming that no withdrawals were made. Okay, so yung given natin dyan, yung principal amount na dineposit ni Venus is 5,000 pesos. The R is the 6.5% or 0 0.065 kasi yung 6.5 divided by 100, that is 0 0.65 kasi yung 0 0.065, ito yung isa substitute natin mamaya sa ating formula. So the T or the length of time is within 2 years. How much is the interest? Okay. So using the simple interest formula, I equals P times R times T. Substituting for all the values, P is 5,000, R is 0 0.065 times 2. That is equal to 650 pesos interest. Okay, so 5, sa 5,000 na diniposit ni Venus sa bangko, 6.5% 6 yung simple interest. Um, within 2 years, tutubo yun, mag earn siya ng 650 Pesos. So another example, Christian invested 30,000 in the stock market which guaranteed an interest of 6,500 after 3 years. At what rate would her inver investment earn? So yung rate naman yung hinahanap natin dito. Given 
Yung principal value natin is 30,000. Yung in-invest niya, 30,000. Yung T or the length of time is 3 years. Then yung I is the interest, 6,500. So, what is the value of R? So, using the simple interest formula again, for R, we have to divide both sides by P and T para matanggal yung PT na kasama ng R. So, the R is equal to I over PT. So, substituting, pwede na, pwede na tayong mag-substitute ng values. I is 6,500, P is 30,000, then 3. The R is 0 0.622 or 6.22 percent. Another example, Lina borrowed 10,000 from a bank charging 12% simple interest with a promise that she would pay the principal and interest at the end of the agreed term. If she paid 4,500 at the end of the specified term, how long did she use the money? So, how long did she use the money? Ibig sabihin, yung unknown natin dito is the length of time. So, given yung 10,000 as the principal amount, yung R is 12% or 0.12, then I is 4,500. Using the simple interest formula again, I equals PRT. Since P yung unknown, i-divide natin both sides by PR para makancel yung P at saka R. So yung value ng T is equal to I over PR. Substitute, I is 10,000. Uh, I mean, I is 4,500. P is 10,000 and R is 0.12. So the T is 3.75 years. Okay. For the next example, Rachel paid 7,400 interest at 14.5% for a four year loan. What was the original loan? Yung tinatanong dito yung original, meaning yung principal amount, yung unknown. So given. R is 14.5%, T is 4 years, I is 7,400. Using the simple interest formula again, since P yung unknown natin or your, yung principal amount, we have to divide both sides of the equation by R and T. So yung equivalent value ng P is I over RT. P equals I over RT, substituting for those values, I is 7,400, R is 0 0.145, then T is 4, that is equal to 12,758.62 centavos. So, your original loan ni Rachel, 12,758.62, yung interest nun is 7,400, Okay. Then, next example, Vincent borrowed 35000 from a bank at 12.5 simple interest for 5 years. How much will she pay the, ba the bank after 5 years? So, we are going to compute for the future amount or F. Kasi, yun yung, ang tinatanong dito is, magkano niya babayaran yung banko after 5 years? So, given yung principal amount is 35,000, yung R is 12.5%, T is 5 years, kukunin ko muna yung I or yung interest amount para makuha ko yung F or yung future amount. Using the simple interest formula, I is equal to PRT in order to get the value of I, substituting the 35,000 the 0.125 and the 5 years, that interest is equal to 21,875 pesos. So, using this, I, and the principal amount, P, pwede ko silang i-add in order to get the value of the future amount or F. So, P is 35,000, I is 21,875, yung nakuha natin. So, F, therefore, is equal to 56,000 875 pesos. Next, if Rose borrowed 42,000 from a bank at 10.5 simple interest, how, mal, how much will she pay at the end of 15 months? So, given naman yung 
yung P tsaka yung R tsaka yung T natin, 15 months yung T or in years, equivalent natin in, in years, yung 15 months is 1.25 years or 1 and 1 fourth a year. So, unknown yung F. In order to find for the value of F, gagamitin natin yung formula na F equals P times 1 plus RT. Yung T natin dito is always in years ang unit, hindi months, hindi days, kundi years. So, the value for F is equal to 42,000 times 1 plus 0 0.105 times 1.25. So, the resulting uh, value for 0 0.125 times 1.25 is 0 0.13125 using the PEMDAS rule. So, F is equal to 42,000 times 1.13125. So, F now is equal to 47,512 and 50 centavos. Next example, the total amount paid on a loan is 84,000 pesos. If the loan was for 2 years at 9% simple interest, what was the original loan? Okay, yung mga given natin dyan, given yung F, okay, yung future amount, yung total amount paid sa loan. 84,000. Yung R natin is 9% or 0 0.09 in decimal. Yung T natin is 2 years. So, using yung formula natin kanina, since P yung unknown natin, we have to divide the equation both sides by 1 plus RT. So, we can get P is equal to F over 1 plus RT. Okay. Substituting for the value of F, R, and T. 84,000 times 1 plus 0 0.09 times 2 or 0 0.18 since 0 0.09 times 2 is 0 0.18. 1 plus 0 0.18 is 1.18. So the principal amount is 71,186 pesos and 44 centavos. So that is for the subtopic simple interest formula under the simple interest topic. So, if you have any questions, just comment down. Okay? So, thank you for listening.